Well, hello everybody and welcome to New Hope Here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is Hattie. I'm in a weird spot today, guys. You are? Yes. Like emotionally or <laughs> just like physically in the room? Yeah. <laughs> Things, Something. <laughs> it's always hard to say, is it like physically or is it emotionally? I'm mm -hmm. not I'm mm -hmm. not sure. But I meant physically right okay. now. Yes. Okay. Hello, Jordan. Hello. Thank you for being with us on the lobby today. Thunderous applause for Jordan. Okay, let's try it again. Hello, Jordan. No, I, I, I oh, was you all got over it. it. Okay. Oh, you already have. have. We but can't hear it. Jordan is the best at providing the thunderous applause as a guest. <laughs> yes. I think like I shouldn't have uh, used the, the. I'm used to David just bar. telling me what to do exactly. Right? <laughs> He's yeah. like, stand there, thunderous applause. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You're also a great whoop whooper. Yeah, it's true. If you guys did. You have that done. Really well. You've done better whoop that whoops. Really if you guys didn't know this about Pastor Jordan, he's a great whoop whooper whenever you need. So, mm -hmm. like, just on a Tuesday in the office, if you need a whoop whoop. I like to keep those spirits up. Whoop whoop. <laughs> he's also a great uh, baptizer. <gasps> yes. And my, uh, we had our baptism Sunday a few weeks ago, and my wife was taking photos from it. Can we and get whoop. that up here? Like the photos? We probably could put one of those photos in. Yeah, right, right where Jordan's pointing, we'll put the photo of Jordan. I see that on YouTube. Thanks, I don't know. Michael. Jordan is a great celebrator <laughs> post dunking during the baptism. Yeah. I was clapping a lot. You were it like, was, the uh, appropriate level of joy and excitement yeah. that you so showed. Fun. It was fantastic. So basically, Jordan's our best <clears throat> encourager around yeah. here. The whooping, the, Michael, the thunder supplies. As Michael and I carried these chairs into the room, he was encouraging. You're just <laughs> I, did, Jordan. I did clap wow. on it. I was this like, very good job. What a, what, a, what a day for Jordan so far. <laughs> thank, thank you for being here, Jordan. We're all so glad you're here. Well, thank you I'm for also, being here. Oh, yay. Oh. Yes. Thunderous applause. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> David, I didn't get to introduce you yet. I think it's very important that mm. you are introduced. Thank David. You're Thanks also great. in a weird spot too. today. I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm producing today. Yeah. I like it. And and I'm wearing my... I think you need to discuss what just happened oh, a yes. few days ago. The greatest holiday ever in all created. The mm -hmm. Yes, which yeah. is Thanksgiving. Yeah. Jordan, I think Jordan is on our team Thanksgiving versus... We love Thanksgiving. Yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't love Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jordan. That's right. This yes. is like the whole this team is Thanksgiving a great crew. crew right I here. Yeah. This, this is, is a right crew to have. Okay, you guys, if you had to like get rid of all of the other Thanksgiving food, which this would never happen because Thanksgiving you eat it all, Ooh. what would be like the one thing you'd have to eat on Thanksgiving? Ooh. It's a really hard question to answer. See, I feel like that's different than what's your favorite thing. Yeah. Because I think I think I usually say my favorite thing is the green bean casserole. Okay. Okay. But I think if I had to get rid of everything else, I don't think green bean casserole would be the one, the one thing. What would be I the chose. one thing? Maybe mash. Do I get gravy along with sure. the mashed potatoes? Yeah, that kind of just. It's like, probably then. It's probably mashed potatoes. That's okay. Definitely the right answer. Yeah. yeah. Would yours be the same for both? Like, if you had to get rid of everything, mashed potatoes, it would be gravy? mashed potatoes, and that's yeah. your favorite also. I think like I just. I could eat mashed potatoes just every day. Mm. It's so good. Mm. Hold on. Are we also getting rid of the dessert? Because <laughs> I feel like I still need pumpkin pie after my yeah. three plates of nothing but mashed <laughs> potatoes and gravy. <laughs> I still need pumpkin pie. Well, you can have yeah. one plate cool. of mashed potatoes cool and then one bowl of gravy yeah. as dessert. I like... <laughs> I'm okay with that. that works. <laughs> my favorite so thing about Thanksgiving is leftovers. Like, I love oh, all, all of it. But <laughs> it's not really Thanksgiving unless you can eat it again. Mm -hmm. Like... Right. Tomorrow mm -hmm. for breakfast the next I, day. I have a question for you. Yeah. There's a lot of people, uh, this is a decisive argument here, so uh -oh. I'm prefacing. Some people uh, get really mad if their Thanksgiving food touches each other. Oh, not me. No. I think like you mix it all together. Uh, you know? The only thing that can't touch for me is if there's like a jello or a fruit thing. Or like, cranberry, sure. yeah. Yeah, like I want that on its Put own. Put that on yeah. its own. But... And then, like, the pie, obviously. But stuffing the mashed potatoes, the turkey. Yeah, of, Great. Make that into corn some mulch. With some I corn, like, well, on top of all see, the mulch. I, yeah. <laughs> make it into a mulch. I don't mix it together, like, <laughs> just a brown... <laughs> yeah. I can yeah, picture like, Jordan doing that. Like a, like a famous bowl from KFC. Exactly. I don't do that. That's but so I good. do, like, I now usually I take a bite bowl. of each. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, they, they are pretty delicious. Maybe I should do that. But I'll take, like, you know... Some I'll get some like green bean casserole on a mm -hmm. piece of turkey with some mashed potatoes. Yeah, gravy, that's, what, that's more what I mean. Yeah, just in. put it all together. Yeah. yeah. So there good. was a season where my family would take our leftovers and we would like intentionally make extra so we could have a bunch of leftovers and we would put them in an egg roll. And this might be an egg controversial, roll. but we would Not also put at all. cranberries in it. So like Ooh. it was like the, there's the controversy. Well, because that's I'm, like stuff mixing a little that's bit. That's true. I'm disappointed so because you. Are you have, you guys both are having like a real fun Thanksgiving mm -hmm. uh, here just in a couple Potentially, of days. Potentially, you guys will know if <laughs> well, it was fun or not. That's true. <laughs> You're going to the Vikings game. We'll post in the chat. But last year, you talked about these egg rolls, and yeah. I was promised some of these egg rolls, and now I'm not going to get any because you're not having a normal Thanksgiving. Yeah, Maybe so you'll sorry. have to come over 
to our house with my wife and make them with our leftovers. Because <gasps> yes. Joanna usually we do like we do like a week of leftovers where we're just eating okay. the meal. Classic. Yeah. And then with the turkey that's then left over, Joanna has made a pot pie with it the last few Amazing. years. Oh, Amazing. Amazing. It's that's incredible. So good. But maybe we could spare some for some egg rolls. It, they're, they're really easy to make. And then you dunk them in gravy. It's like the mm-hmm. best thing ever. That sounds pretty good. I'll, yeah. I'll dunk about it. I'll be honest though. I'll <laughs> yeah. be on board with it. Yeah. In my family, like, it was like maybe half a day of leftovers. <laughs> that's that's heartbreaking. Yeah. It was gone. That that's is so tough. sad. That is tough. So you had to get yeah. up like early the next day and like eat it all. And then yeah. it would be gone. And then yeah. it was gone, yeah. So sad. Do you guys do ever pie? for breakfast after <laughs> breakfast like, lunch and dinner yeah. after jo- no i don't think so <gasps> oh, pie's man. usually gone do you guys we want to know <laughs> man, you guys like make more food gone. at your thing yeah i know right yeah like There's triple people, the pie you know? mm-hmm. i am like a at least like my, me personally i have to bring two pies to whatever we're eating because you have Otherwise, to have some like, for breakfast like they won't let you in well, no, it's just like, <laughs> I feel like I We're fail sorry, Thanksgiving yeah. if I haven't Minimum made two, two pies. Pie entry. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a bougie Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that means, but it, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. definitely a bougie Thanksgiving. Oh, I was wondering what you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not hip with the kids lingo. It's like fancy, you man. know. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, uh, my wife, or my wife, my mom started having to make two pumpkin pies every year because it just it needed to happen we can't mm-hmm. have like one slice of pie left right. over the next day. No. <laughs> so she would make like four pies it was pretty great because she and had to make a pecan pie for my dad mm-hmm. and then when joanna joined our family joanna didn't really like either of those and my mom's uh, a nice lady so she started making an apple pie as well mm-hmm. and i was like Good the more move. the more pies the merrier that's, that's, that's less that's less pumpkin time. slices being eaten if everybody eats the other ones, yeah, you're then like, I'll bring eat the it pump- on. Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. What's the like <clears throat> essential pie? I, well, I'm with you. I think it's, it's pumpkin. Pump- it's yeah, pumpkin. it's pumpkin. Yeah. Okay, we, we're we, all in agreement. We're the yeah, Thanksgiving we're, team. Yeah, we're, yeah. yeah, the Thanksgiving team has spoken. But if you okay. disagree, please put it in the chat. We yeah. love. We still love you. I don't yeah. think that other pies to, are bad though. Okay, we do need to get to our uh, our last week of hot dish. It's kind of sad. Even though it's been. Not a month, and there was a random week where we didn't have it. But. There's like a uh, Michael is coming in. Yes, a, 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 Michael. Oh, Michael. a Michael is arriving. A wild oh, Michael oh. appears. Oh. Uh, you get the dish. Wow, thank you. So we've had a hot dish month. That's why you're here today, Jordan. You That's why I'm here. To and eat are, this hot dish. Is like there anything more Miss West mid? Miss Western, mm-hmm. Midwestern, Midwestern. Then a, then like a, a hot dish in a crock pot. Oh, I better serve it. That's right. David um, <laughs> got very upset with me. I was not upset. I was. I was just giving you the. the no, walk. before. Oh. Because oh. apparently I go long. I yeah. believe the last two so. times you hosted, we went three to four minutes long on both of them. Okay, Jordan, yeah. tell us what yeah, this hot us, dish is. Um, Jordan brought so this hot. This dish. is the same hot dish that was here last week. <laughs> Which I didn't know. But with a different name, right? Yeah. yeah. What's the name of this So one? my mom... Um, oh, we still don't have any pepper. I have a certain one here. We really need to... Where's the yeah, pepper? Are you Where's the board? pepper, cool. guys? Yeah. I just made a really, like, snarky face to the camera <laughs> when you said that. Oh, no. And I have to admit that. I'm sorry. Where's the pepper at? Anyways, my mom made oh, this yeah. hot dish. Um, it's the same one as the last one, but for a different reason. <laughs> I guess she also uh, didn't know the name of it. But then when she would um, babysit kids, they would pretend to be lions. And it was their favorite hot dish. So mm. this is lion's favorite hot dish. Favorite hot I dish. But it's that. the same thing that you ate last week. Which, which <laughs> is pretty fitting for hot dish month. Yeah, yeah they're all like the as, same thing as with a different noodle. Hot dish is just cream of something soup. Ground beef. Some noodles and some beef. <laughs> yeah. So this is classic. Wrong. Maybe a vegetable mixed in there. This is lion's favorite. What, did, what was Pastor Kylie's? It was... L- Laura's, Laura's favorite? Laura's favorite? <laughs> yeah, I think that was Laura's favorite. Very yep. similar names even. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely the same hot dish. Yeah. But it's good. But that's not a bad thing because yeah. it's a good hot dish. The best part is now I don't have to buy lunch. Oh. Do you also, know, that's amazing. Do you know what cream of something soup your mom uses? That's a really good in? question. First of all, thanks to your mom. I think yeah, that's the only Levon. slight difference. <clears throat> is I think you know, this is just cream of chicken. Mm. And I think the last one was mostly yeah. cream of chicken with like a can of cream of... Mushroom. Yeah, she okay. also used cream of mushroom. Yeah. So no cream of mushroom in this one. Well, that's a massive difference. So mm-hmm. yes, it's a completely different meal. For our meal. hot dish connoisseurs, that is, yeah. I think I'd have to be a soup we connoisseur did. to tell the difference between cream of chicken and cream of mushroom. Yeah. I do want to uh, shout out some of our New Hope here regulars okay. for their conversations about it being casserole, not hot dish. <gasps> You're wrong, oh, but no. we love you. Yeah. Um, and we would invite you to join us sometime for some hot dish. Did you have something you wanted to bring up on the? Oh, we, we only have. <laughs> yeah. 
like 30 seconds. Okay. So you're going to have to I do got it an email this week from one of our regulars. We yes. were talking about them a moment ago, we Car- or Carrie and Ellie. And they said Hi guys. they've been baking. <clears throat> and Ellie said that you don't. we don't need to measure. You just measure with your heart. Like yeah, oh, that's great. Yep. I, got, I, they, I saw them on that's Sunday great. and they told me that just like Hattie, we, we were measuring with our hearts. I hope so. you guys also <laughs> measure with your I bet LaVon measured with her heart definitely. today. Yeah. Yep, mm-hmm. definitely. But she made a lot. So. Just, yeah, she just that, she has a big me. heart. And we love you for that, yep. LaVon. Thank you. Yeah. I wrap it up because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I wrap it up. You don't have to tell people what you're doing. Okay, now next, is the part where... Next, guys, I will close this out. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us today on the lobby again, just yes. where we like to chat and hang out. We hope that you have made a hot dish, not a casserole during mm-hmm, hot dish month. Mm-hmm. And we've got a great message for you guys today, a great time of worship. Is this a Christmas song week? There is our There's first Christmas, Christmas song, song this week. Which yep. is appropriate because now Thanksgiving is over and yes. we can Which now listen. Which makes me sad but happy. Yes, yep. yeah. because yeah. it's now Christmas season. But thanks for joining you guys. We'll see you in a second. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. We are so glad that you joined us. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. We are the biggest Thanksgiving fanatics on staff, so it's only right that we are here to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving and ate pie and turkey and stuffing. Yep, and wore weird Thanksgiving shirts that you might have. I didn't, but I'm glad you did. No, I break this shirt out every year on Thanksgiving. I'm a big fan. Next year, I'll have a weird Thanksgiving shirt. Perfect. Hopefully, you guys will too. Make sure you remember that promise (laughs) next year. Uh, But it is our second to last week of promised land we're finally to david it's going to be a really great week pastor mike has such a great message um but we are just so excited that you joined us today yes and part of our uh, worship time together is that we're going to be participating in communion and we really hope you join us Mm -hmm. for that Uh, in order to prepare we uh, just ask that you go grab something to eat and drink and then pastor jordan will lead us in that moment together in just a little bit yeah and it doesn't have to be like a communion wafer and grape juice. Or it could be pie. It could, oh my goodness. And you, coffee. You could definitely use Thanksgiving leftovers yes, that would be for amazing. communion. The, it's not, there's nothing magical about the food. It's just about us remembering mm-hmm. what Jesus did for us. And so we hope that you'll join us for that. Before that, we have a really cool time of worship. We have our first Christmas song that we're going to go into today because so Thanksgiving's good. over. I know. I'm like still as, a little I know, bit like, oh, should but we celebrate as, it? As Hattie and I will always let you know, once Thanksgiving is over, it's time to start celebrating Christmas. You can Christmas. listen to Christmas music. Yep. So it's time. We're going to have a great worship song, <laughs> a great Christmas song. We're so glad that you're here. Mm-hmm. Would you worship with us?
sing this out like a rushing wind Jesus
thanks again church for joining us today and just a quick reminder communion is coming up right after this host moment so uh, make sure you have your stuff ready for that yes and church family we want to be able to connect with you today mm -hmm. uh, we're so glad that you join with us every week or for those of you joining for the first time we love that you are here with us and we we just want to know that that you're joining with us in worship today so fill out that connect card yeah. uh, there's a button in the chat right now that says connect card connect yep. something like that <laughs> so click that button fill out the connect card we just love knowing your name mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested in just learning more about New Hope yep. here you can uh, ask questions on your connect card uh, and also fill out a prayer request yeah. we love being able to pray with you as well yeah right now there's a link in the chat for New Hope here kids it's a service that's designed specifically for your children uh, elementary down to preschool and it's just a great time with Pastor Andrea and her sister Pastor Anna uh, they have they play a game they're, so fun. they're silly <laughs> they and silly. Uh, we encourage even the adults to watch with so uh, yes. grab a second device uh, pull that up for your children and and uh, let them have fun with the service that's for them yes and I want to take a moment and just talk to those of you who give faithfully to New mm -hmm. Hope and uh, just to say thank you yeah. uh, to those of you who partner with us in that way uh, we're so grateful for how you allow us to continue to do ministry and reach people all around the world mm -hmm. uh, who find uh, New Hope here so thank you for those of you who give if you want to continue to give all of the information is on the screen here uh, you can text to give you can do it through our app but also there's a link here right now uh, and those of you who, who join us every weekend and maybe you haven't given yet uh, information again is right there for you and just consider praying and asking God how you can be a part of New Hope in this way. All right, church, it's time for communion, so let's go to that. Well, I'm excited to be leading you in communion today. Uh, today I will be using juice and uh, a wafer as my elements, but whatever elements you might have around the house will work, whether it be some juice that you have, whether it be some bread, uh, just go ahead and grab those elements and we'll partake in communion together. We'll be reading out of Luke chapter 22, verses 19 and 20 today. In verse 19 it says, and he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So as we grab that bread, let's partake of that together and be thankful for the body of Christ that was broken on our behalf. And in verse 20 it says, And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So as we grab that juice together, let's remember the new covenant that Jesus established with us, that he loved us so much that he would die on the cross for us and save us of our sins. Let's partake of that element together. Church, let's pray. Dear God, we are amazed and astounded by your love for us, the love that you have for each and every one of your children. We are thankful for the gift of communion that you have given us, the gift that you have given us in your Holy Spirit, and the gift that you gave us when you sent Jesus to pardon and atone us from all of our sins. God, I pray that this wouldn't be a one of action that we look at, but rather this would be a celebration of how you work in us and how you continue to work in us, that we would live truly in remembrance of the community that we have with you. God, I pray that you would exalt our actions, that you would lift us up, that you would be in us and through us in all of the things that we say and all of the things that we do, that everything that we share with others would be representative of that communion and that community that we have with you. God, we are thankful for who you are. We are thankful for the gift that you have given us to be part of your mission here on earth. And we just pray that you would be with us as we go, grow, and give in our community. In your almighty name, Jesus, amen.
Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Even I know many of you may have had to work over Thanksgiving, but I hope somewhere, somewhere you're able to stop, celebrate, and especially if you have a relationship with Jesus, had some time to express thankfulness to the God who's at work in us. Grab your Bibles or your storybooks, and we're going to dive in today. And who we're talking about is a young man by the name of David. And most of us are probably familiar with at least the big moment in David's life, right? When he as a young boy grabbed five rocks and faced Goliath, a huge, experienced war warrior. And you've got to ask the question, what kind of a little kid would march into single-handed combat with five, just five of these things, a slingshot and a stick. And he would face a seasoned soldier equipped with the best, most current weapons of his day. What kind of a kid would run toward the, one of the biggest warriors around instead of running the other way? And what kind of a kid would sling a rock at the armored forehead, at least he had a helmet on, when not one man in his own country's army, including the king who was taller and bigger than anybody else in the country, would face him? What kind of a person does it take to do that? And you've got to come to the conclusion that either this little kid was nuts or he was cocky and naive or that he knew something that no one else around him knew. That he was convinced that he had an advantage over this giant of a man that no one else around him could see. If you've got your books, turn to chapter 11. If you've got your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel 16 and 17. And uh, 1 Samuel is about eight books into your Bible. We're going to spend the last two weeks of this mini-series that's part of our larger series. We're calling this mini-series Promised Land as we're walking through the greatest story ever told. These last two weeks, before we take a break to celebrate Christmas, to look at the life of this king, the greatest king in the history of God's people and the nation of Israel. And we're introduced to him as a child. And so this week we're going to look at the years leading up to when he became king, kind of the good part of his life. And next week we're going to look at when he was king and when he struggled, struggled the most. And just to help us get started, we'll go to the lower story here. And here in the lower story, to get the context, last week we were introduced to the first king. And the first king said he wanted to follow God, but he wanted to follow God his way, his timing, and it. the more you do that, the more you drift away from God and the more you spiral out of control. And so God eventually moved his blessing from Saul and rejected him as king. And eventually, near the end of the story, of Saul's story, Saul's life ends tragically. But when Saul began to drift away from God, God sent Samuel to choose another king. And he sent him to a little backwater town called Bethlehem. We heard about Bethlehem a couple of weeks ago when Pastor Kylie took us to the book of Ruth. Bethlehem was where Boaz and Ruth were from. In fact, this family, this family, Jesse, were Boaz and this was Boaz and Ruth's grandson. And David would have been their great-grandson. But this really no name, no name of no consequence family, this is where Samuel is sent. We actually, on Labor Day, several weeks ago now, we talked about this moment when Samuel anointed David as king. They went through all of the, all of the kids and ran out of kids then, and sons that looked like they could be king. And then Samuel asks, asks Jesse kind of this foolish question, do you have any more kids? And here we have on page 146, 146, David's dad answers this. He says, there's still the youngest. He's tending sheep. And Samuel said, 
send for him, we will not sit down. In other words, we won't separate or celebrate the choosing of a new king until he arrives. Now, you've got to understand the original Hebrew a little bit to understand the full import of what happened there. That phrase, the youngest, didn't just mean the chronologically the youngest in the family. It's not just that he was the last born. It also meant the lowest in rank. And it also meant, and catch this, catch this. This is David's dad saying this, of no consequence. What's being said is that no one, including his family, and not just his brothers, but also his parents, no one thought that David was going to amount to much. No one thought that God could do much with David. And here's the deal that we just need to start out with as we walk into David's story. David didn't start out as a warrior, a soldier, a giant killer, a leader, or a king. He started out with everyone convinced that there really wasn't much to him. Now, I don't know where you've been in your life or what your family has said or hasn't said, but we all have voices at different times in our lives, right? That say, you can't, God can't, can you really be forgiven? Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it's your own voice. You can't do this. You don't have the capacity to do this. But as we walk through David's life, something changed him. And in these last two weeks, or in these last few weeks, as we've been walking into the promised land with the nation of Israel, we've been learning what it looks like to live a promised land kind of life. It's not a life without battles. David would be eventually a soldier, a life filled with battles. Not a life without bruises or even failures, as we'll discover next week. David had at least one and actually several pretty big failures. But a promised land life is a life where we're growing under God's leadership and beginning to experience more victories in our life than we're experiencing defeats. And so we've been learning to read stories like David's story from three perspectives. It's helping us understand God's story, the upper story. And I'll move to the upper story when we talk about that, the lower story. This is real people like us. And of course, my story. Why does this king matter to us from all those years ago? And here's where we're going to start. We're actually going to start here in the lower story. Because as we read David's story from a lower story perspective, we've got to ask the question, how does this seemingly, seeming, seemingly nobody become a bold warrior and a king and eventually a man, even with some huge failures, described as a man after God's own heart and put in line with the birth of Jesus. In fact, Jesus is called from David's line or a son of David. And here's the answer. The answer is he let God grow him. He let God grow him. Because we're going to learn from David's life that God wants to do that in us and all of us. He wants all of us to grow. He didn't design us just to stay static. And here's the big idea. We've been calling these lessons we've been learning here in the promised land, promised land lessons, promised land truths, promised land principles, what it means to live under God's design. And here's the big promised land truth for today. Pay attention to God's preparation. It's worth saying again. I like that. Pay attention to God's preparation. One of my favorite things when I hang out with my small groups and have been in small groups over the years is to ask people for their stories when they're comfortable to, to share their stories because it always amazes me how a decision that seemed so little, so insignificant years ago can kind of turn a whole life on a hinge, a friendship, a move, a new job, uh, whatever, and how God would use that decision or that season of life to prepare that person for what's next. The weekend before Thanksgiving at our in-person campuses, we celebrated baptism. And one of the things, one of the many things I love about baptism is hearing the stories of how God prepared people and drew people. In fact, some of you, I've talked to you recently, some of you have found yourself joining us as joining us online, joining us at one of our in-person campuses. And you said to me, I don't know what it is. I wake up in the morning and I feel like I have to be there. And listen, that's the Holy Spirit beginning to prepare you to grow. And he's growing you and drawing you close to him. It's kind of like 
building blocks. You ever play with Legos or other things? The first layer is what we build the next layer on and the next layer. One of the small groups I was in several years ago, one of the guys shared the story about how when he was a kid, his dad made him sell magazines door to door, different day maybe, door to door. And he was a shy kid, didn't like talking to strangers. And he said that summer selling magazines changed the trajectory of his life. And now he's leading a big company and he talks to people he's never met every single day. If you were to ask him, if you were to stand here with me, he'd say, that summer of selling magazines prepared me for my life today. Kylie and I have been talking recently about just how God prepared us with each season of our life for the next season of our life. She grew up working, uh, she grew up her family working with churches and traveling from church to church to church. And as a result, she saw so many different churches, so many different ways, and it prepared her to be the leader she is today, to bring that perspective in, perspective in as a leader of our Williston campus. For me, as I look at the different churches I've served in rural settings and suburban settings, in church plants and, and different settings, And if you'd have told us years ago that we would be part of this amazing group of people and this amazing network of churches and campuses and church plants called New Hope, we would have kind of laughed because no one talked about church in the ways that we now experience church with multi-sites and campuses. We had no idea, but God was preparing us, and I'm so, so glad he, he did. Pay attention to God's preparation because he wants to grow you. And remember, there's an upper story thread that we keep coming back to. In fact, we'll just step over here real quick at the beginning, this upper story thread. And remember this for you, even when it doesn't feel like it. God is always at work. He's always involved in your life. He's always at work helping you to grow. And the thing that, the only thing that can get in the way of your growth is, is you. And here's the amazing thing about God and his grace, is even when I get in the way of his growth, when I come back to him, I find he's been at work in the background and he'll actually redeem how I got in the way to help me grow. So as we walk through David's early life this week, we're going we're to talk about some preparation lessons, some preparation lessons. Here's the first one. First one is God's timing is different. And I love this and better than ours. On page 146, as we finish the story of David being anointed and and being chosen to be king, from there until the time he becomes king, 15 years pass. 15 years of waiting from when God said you're going to be king to when he actually becomes king. One of the repeating lessons that we've come across in this journey from cover to cover through the Bible is that we as human beings tend to not want to wait on God's timing. We tend not to trust that God's timing is not just different, but better than ours. Remember back in Genesis, and if you weren't with us, go back and catch up. You can follow along and go to our our YouTube channel or go to our website and follow along. Remember Abram and Sarah, they were promised a child, but the child didn't come when they thought he should come. So Sarah said, hey, why don't you sleep with the slave? That's what everybody else around us is doing. That'll be, become our child. Then God said, no, you're getting ahead of me. Joseph had dreams about his future. And when he told his family, and he kind of bragged about it, kind of forced it upon his family, instead of cultivating an an excitement for what God was doing, it cultivated jealousy and insecurity and eventually got him sold into slavery. For Kylie and I, it was in the spring of 2010. We thought we were serving a church in California where we'd been part of this amazing group of people and we were helping to plant this church. And we just felt like God had said, you know what? This has been a season of preparation for what's next and because every season is a preparation for what's next. And by the way, if you're a follower of Jesus, that will never stop even into eternity. God will always have a what's next. But we just began to look around and go, okay, if... If the time is, time is coming for us to kind of move on, should we move on now? And it was kind of fun, and it's kind of fun to be wanted. We had a bunch of people call us just at that point in time and say, hey, why don't you come join the, this church or this church? And we're like, Maybe we should go. Maybe we just pick the best. And we decided to stop, like we talked about last week, learning to listen for God's voice and wait for God's direction. And God kept saying, wait, wait, wait. 
And from the time we felt like God said, I've got something next for you, to the time when we knew what was next, it was a year for us, a year of waiting. And I'm so glad we did. Because that's why, that's how we ended up finding this place called Williston, North Dakota, and this amazing group of people called New Hope. And we, we keep looking at each other going, what's the next 10 years, 15 years? What's this going to bring? What's God preparing in us now for the future? God's timing is different and better than ours. Second preparation lesson. God is giving you current challenges to prepare you for future challenges. God's giving you current challenges to prepare you for future challenges. Chapter 11, page 147. Page 147. This is kind of the account. And there's a whole chapter in the Bible about little David facing Goliath. First full paragraph. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. How much is that? We'll talk about that in a moment. But it's about nine feet. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his, on his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. He was well armed. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. This was not an easy guy to face. I wouldn't want to face him in a dark alley, let alone on a battlefield. And people are going, what, what about this? You get this picture? There was an army here, army here, and this huge guy would come out every day and he would say, hey, send one person to fight me and whoever wins this battle, whoever wins this battle, will win it for the whole army. Why would they fight that way? We're going to talk more about that on the, on the Grow podcast this week. I hope you're checking that out. But there are some reasons for it and there's some significant reasons that kind of explain why Israel struggled with this as well. <clears throat> But we need to understand, just from a lower story perspective, you know, we kind of get the picture. Goliath was a big guy, he was a giant guy. But, you know, the, the tallest man in recorded, in modern record, recorded history was, uh, wasn't as tall as Goliath. And there's actually a statue for him. And he's, he's this tall beanpole of a guy, could barely walk without support. You know, it looked like a gust of wind would blow him over. That wasn't Goliath. We, we know that wasn't him just by the weight of his armor. I know, it was different weights, but I thought I'd have a little bit of fun. So let me ask you the question. Let's do a little bit of a quiz. We'll put it here on the screen. How much do you think a shekel weighs? Because it says that his armor weighed, you know, thousands of shekels. It says it was 5,000 shekels. Do you think it weighs, a she one shekel is twice as much as half a shekel? I know, that's as funny as I get, all right? Or half as much as two shekels? I'm just going to drive that joke into the ground. <laughs> Or it's the same as two smidges. If you're from the Midwest, you know, you've heard that. Or is a shekel the same as a Shaquille O'Neal, a shekel O'Neal plus a nickel? They're rolling their eyes here in, in the room. Or is a shekel about 0.025 pounds or 1 40th of a pound? Of course, that's it. So that meant that his armor was at least 125 pounds. Just his armor and the point of his spear, just the tip of it, was 25 pounds or so. This Boy is carrying some weight just on his clothes. And it says he was wearing bronze greaves. What are bronze greaves? Because again, we've got to get a lower story perspective, right? Right? Were bronze greaves, was that an 80s rock band? Were, they, were bronze greaves cousins to golden sheaves? Um, were bronze greaves what you would put a dead person's ashes in? So you know, like a bronze urn? Or I don't like bronze. Do they come in silver? Again, I've got to have fun with this, right? were bronze greaves leggings for soldiers. They were leggings for soldiers. Can you imagine? Try walking in bronze leggings. You get, but you get the picture. One army was on this hill, one army is on this hill, and this huge, well-equipped, bulky, seasoned soldier with the best equipment is in the middle. And he says, let's do this the easy way. Easy for him to say, right? I'll represent my team. You send someone to represent your team. Winner takes all. And all of Israel's army, including their biggest, baddest soldier, the king, says, uh-uh. And David, who was just an errand boy, he wasn't part of the army at all. He was sent by his dad to bring food for his brothers, says, I'll take him on. 
And he does. And if you're familiar with this story, he takes him on with a few rocks, a slingshot, and a shepherd's staff. And Goliath is defeated. And we could talk about that for a while. But here's the real question. What turned this no-name, no-consequence David into a giant, ki giant killer when the entire rest of the army said no? He actually tells us himself. If you've got your books, page 148, 148. It's in 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. In 148, if I can find it, here it is. It says, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Now, that's not like a resume builder, right? I've been a shepherd. But listen, when a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, what did he do? I went after it. It's not like, oh, there's a sheep. No, I went after it. I struck it. He hit it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. And when it turned on me, you catch it? He said, I hit it rescued the sheep from its mouth, and it was still alive. So obviously it would turn on me. This kid is not afraid of anything. I seized it by its hair, so he knew how to get in close where the claws and the teeth couldn't do much damage from a certain angle, struck it, and he killed it. He said, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine, in other words, this Pagan follower of God will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. And the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. He recognized, listen, I may have grown in my skill, but it's God who has prepared me. Pay attention to my preparation. In other words, he's saying the challenge that I've had, my current challenges, have prepared me for this challenge. And it's so easy to pass over this. But when you stop and think about that for a moment, imagine you're David. You're in a field watching sheep. There's no one else around. No one else is around. And these sheep aren't even yours. They belong to your dad, okay? And a bear comes along. And you have no gun. You have no compound bow. You have a big stick, and I'm sorry, but no stick is big enough for me to chase after a bear and save a stupid sheep. But that's what David would have had. And what would you do? Would you run? I probably would have. He could have. I mean, the only one to see him run would have been the sheep, and they ain't talking, right? He could have. The sheep weren't going to fight. The sheep aren't, sheep aren't known for their courage. David, nobody would have ever known if David had run except David. But David stayed. And David fought. And catch this, David learned. And here's the truth. This is a my story truth that I want us to talk about. If you wait until your Goliath comes along, you won't be ready for your Goliath. If you wait until your big problem comes along, it's not going to go well. If you want to become the kind of follower of God that God is designed for you to become, Pay attention to your preparation. Pay attention to right now. And one of the challenges that you and I have when a, is when a problem is in front of us, we want to remove the problem and rush past it. And maybe God wants to use the problem to grow our perseverance. Maybe God wants to use the challenge to grow our character. Maybe God wants to use our struggle to help us become stronger. Maybe you're facing a parenting problem. Maybe there's a pattern of behavior in one of the kids. Maybe they're going prodigal. That's just wrong. Maybe they keep coming to you and asking for something and doing something and doing something. And you say no and you discipline and you say no and you discipline. But you finally just get tired and worn down. It's like, just go do it. I just don't care. I'm never going to get past this. Listen, you can ignore it. And a lot of parents do, right? Or you could say, God, with your help, I'm going after that bear of a kid. And when you say, God, with your help, I'm going after the bear, something in you gets a little bit stronger when you try it and do it. Maybe you've got a tough project at work. Maybe you're given a new assignment, and you could put it off. You could procrastinate. You could ask your boss, say, it's beyond my capacity. Or you could say, with your help, God, I'm going after that bear. And with that, 
you'll get a little bit stronger. Maybe you've got a grumpy spouse and you could pretend not to notice or you could say, God, with your help, I'm going after that bear. All right, we're going to get ourselves in trouble there. But I'll tell you the truth about David. And I'll tell you the truth about me. It's in the everyday moments, it's in the everyday decisions when no one is watching and it's not so fun that some of the most important growth happens. Hmm. God is giving you current challenges to prepare you for future challenges. Here's our third preparation lesson. Our greatest growth often comes through dealing with difficult people. David's life was filled with people who criticized him. We ought to read about what his own dad thought. He said he's of no account, what his brothers thought. And when you read the account of David and Goliath, you'll find his brothers hadn't grown much in what they thought of him. They criticized him. And he didn't sell himself real well for Saul even early on. But David grew up and he had some success. And then Saul gets insecure and Saul decided he was a threat and he decided he needed to be taken out. And so David lived on the run, hiding in caves, hiding in the wilderness, and even in the enemy's camp for about a decade, 10 years, 10 years of facing and dealing with the most difficult person, at least to this point in his life, the king. You know, it's, here's a, here's the truth, right? It's one thing to face a giant of a problem. It's one thing to walk through a crisis, but it's a whole different level of pain when it's people. When it's people who are close to you, when it's someone you luck up to, when it's someone who's supposed to be on your side and they say something or do something that stabs, they may not want to kill you like Saul did, but it still hurts. Here's a question. How do you deal with difficult people? You've got a choice. You can make them, you can let them make you bitter and wall yourself off and protect yourself. You could attack them back. Or you can invite God to walk with you through the difficult problems and help you grow. It doesn't mean that the relationship will always get better, but often it'll help you grow. We're going to talk more on the Grow Podcast this week about how to walk through times and relationships with people that are difficult. But I want to give us one big difficult thought. Do you know that God sometimes allows difficult people and difficult circumstances to draw you closer to Him? Do you know that sometimes God uses a difficult person to cause you to pray? Do you have people in your life that cause you to pray and I'm not ta- or that teach you to pray? I'm not talking about the person who says, you know, here's how to pray, like Eli did with Samuel, like we talked about last week. No, more like people who are in your life who just because you're around them, you have to pray. Lord, help me. Lord, give me patience. Lord, guide my tongue. Restrain me. Keep me from hurting them. Sometimes God uses those people to draw us close to him. And often our greatest growth comes through dealing with difficult people. Let's go through to an upper story perspective for just a moment. Because even for David, and this is the amazing part of the story, there are times when David was in the wilderness, 10 years of in the wilderness, being hunted down, being alone, being surrounded by kind of the worst of society, 10 years. It was during those 10 years that David wrote songs and prayers and most of what we know of today as the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Songs about struggle. In fact, we're going to look at one of those Psalms next week. Prayers asking for God to protect him, questions for God about why this is happening. And I know for most of us, if we're honest, we say, I really don't want difficult people. I don't. But here's the truth. We all have difficult people around us. Here's an even more difficult secret. You are a difficult person for someone else. And this is the upper story truth. Sometimes God allows difficult people to help us grow. Let's go from the upper story all the way to my story. My story. Because David's life teaches us so much. 
And this lesson may be, I hope, one of the most important for you as we look towards the end of this year. Pay attention to God's preparation. Such a hard lesson to learn. Because we want what's next. We want to know what's next, right? God, can we just move on to what's next right now? Can we just rush ahead? But don't rush God's preparation. If you're single, and this is so important. And listen, I get it. You, you may want to get married. You may be tired of being lonely. I get it. But don't rush into a relationship and force a relationship. Don't rush God. Do what David did. Spend this time becoming the person that God wants you to be to prepare you maybe for the spouse that God has in mind for you, to be the best spouse you can be. If you have difficult people at work or difficult people at home, don't run or write them off or wall them off. Maybe God's using them to strengthen your relationship skills, to deepen your patience. Maybe God is growing your character for the future. Don't hear me say that you need to stay in an abusive or dangerous relationship. Difficult is not always dangerous, but God never intended for you to stay in a dangerous relationship. But don't rush to get out of whatever you're in right now. Don't jump at every opportunity that comes your way just because it's an opportunity. You might need to stay and face a few, few more lions and bears before you're ready for that next Goliath could be that the lions and the bears of today are preparing you for the giant tomorrow. So here's, the, here's kind of the question as you're paying attention to God's preparation. Will you trust that God's on the throne? That's an upper story truth, right? He's always at work. Will you make a commitment not to rush God's process in your life? God's not calling perfect people. He's inviting people to learn to trust him. For David, it was 15 years. 15 years he waited to become king. And he had the opportunity to force it earlier. He could have killed Saul and stepped onto the throne, but he chose not to. So will you learn to trust his preparation? I want to offer this. For some of you, for some of you, as you've been watching, as you've been joining us, God's been drawing you in, and you aren't really sure what's happening. And what he's doing is he's inviting you to come into a relationship with him. And you can come into a relationship with him right now. He's been preparing you already and wants to continue to grow you. And you come into a relationship with him right now with a simple prayer, God, forgive me of my sins because we all have sinned and we all fall short of God's glory. And God, will you help me to learn to follow you and trust your leadership? I want you to grow me. Listen, if you would pray that prayer, if you have prayed that prayer, we want to be able to help you. That's what the church is for, help you take that next step. And our team's going to come on here in just a couple moments and follow up with that, how you can let us know so we can help you. But for all of us, pay attention to God's preparation. Have a great week. Well, hello again, church. We hope that you found today's service valuable and that it encouraged you to take a next step in your faith. Yeah, and Pastor Mike, at the end of his message, he gave that moment for you to take the biggest yeah. next step you can take, and that is to start a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe for some of you, you've had that in the past, and this is your day that you recommitted your life to following him. And if that's you, we are so yes. excited for you. We're excited yes, we for are. all of you who decided to take a next step. Yep. But I want to take a moment and just talk to those of you who made that decision today to follow the Lord. Uh, we want to come alongside you. We want to uh, celebrate with yes. you. As your church family, yep. uh, we're just really excited for mm -hmm. you, um, and we want to be able to support you in this decision. So yeah, there's a few resources we want to get you, and I'm going to say a phone number. Make sure I get it right, because sometimes it. I don't always I'm feel. It. It's seven zero one five zero one eight zero zero two. She nailed it. Yes. So she text, nailed it. <laughs> text, <laughs> and it's on the screen, part. just yes. in case. But that was the right number. <laughs> if you're just listening, text that number. Text the word next to that number, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll follow up with some messages. And we just want to give you some resources. There's a cool Bible reading plan. Uh, we talk about gateway baptism, all of that. You can find on that page yeah and again we're so just so thankful that you joined us today mm -hmm. come back next sunday it's the last week of promised land 
another mini series is wrapping it's up. Coming to a it's close. kind of a bummer, yeah. but then our Christmas series Messiah comes so after good. that, so it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. So make sure you join us next week. But before next week, we have the Grow Podcast, and I want you to, I want to make sure that you check that out. You can find it on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. And Pastor Mike and I just kind of chat, and he dives deeper into his message. There's during this series, there's just been a lot of great stuff that he just isn't able to fit into the weekend mm -hmm. teaching that we dive into in the Grow Podcast. And I think these next two podcasts on David are really really special. So I want to make sure that you check David. those out because it's about David right. and people named David are really cool. That's <laughs> yeah. just like a That's scientific kind of what I was fact. Thinking. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't thinking that, but I'm glad that you I brought gotcha. it up. Yeah, yeah it was I important. Gotcha. It needed to be said. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you check out the Grow Podcast. Uh, like I said, the, the new episodes go live on Monday. Mm. And we just, we love you, church. We hope to see you next week. Until then, let's go and be the church. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Merry Christmas. Thanksgiving is over. Now we can celebrate.